And today I want to read to you, and this is going to be the foundation of the text in which we study today in John chapter 20, uh, found in verse 19. And it says, that Sunday evening, and it's referring to Resurrection Sunday. Uh, three days earlier is, is where death thought, evil thought it found a victory. But, but instead, we know a greater story. And on this Sunday, it is when Christ overcomes death and sin. And it says in verse 19, it says, That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you, the Father. The Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And it continues on and it says, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he responded, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. I won't believe it unless I put my fingers into them and place my hand into the, into the wound in his side. See, today I, I want to have a conversation with you where we look at this section of scripture. And, and for many of us, we might be in a place as well where maybe... Maybe over time we've seen our faith begin to shift. And, and the title of my sermon is this. It, it, it's Fading Faith. That for you and I, sometimes we might find our, ourselves in a season where our faith seems like it's faded a little. Like, like that, that energy, that excitement, that light has, has slowly dwindled. Today I'll, I'll, I want to have this conversation with you as we wrap up this series because I think this is essential and this is important for us to deal with. But before we do, would you join me in prayer right now? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I, I pray for each one of us right now. Wherever we're at, whatever we're facing, wh wherever our faith is, God, that you would reveal something to us God, that you would maybe just ignite something in us, that we would see what really matters, that we would keep our focus on, on the essential, that we would uh, continue to go to your word so that we would mature and grow in, in our spiritual strength as well. And God, that you would just speak today for each of us, that we would come united in, in this fact of how do we deal with a faith when sometimes it just feels like it's fading. God, I pray for a blessing on this message and a blessing on this day. It's in Jesus' name we say, amen. And, and as we uh, have this conversation, um, I, I want to talk to you today about uh, a, a story for me in my faith. I, I want to talk to you, uh, like, like many of you, my faith has faded uh, in, in seasons. And uh, in college is when I, I can say I, I noticed it the most. In, in college is, is when many of us, maybe we've had to deal with it if you were a believer before you entered college to now. See, I want, I want to talk to you about, in college for me, I'm uh, majoring in philosophy, and uh, uh, most of our conversation has to be around um, dealing with uh, what can we conceive and understand, and how do we argue for what we believe is real or what is not. Uh, 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 so when it comes to the existence of God, uh, you have to argue and, and you have different points, right? You can be like, well, how could something come from nothing? So something had to be at the very beginning, right? You have all these different arguments for why you believe the existence of God or don't. Uh, but in that became a struggle in my own life where I had to face these issues. And so many times I was here just with a faith that's slowly fading going, how do you make any sense, God? How, how can I comprehend and understand this? And it wasn't until I read a, a book and in the foreword of the book, it's not even in the book, it was uh, the foreword. So another author just writes about that author and he says this in it, and it just made me pause. And it, it made me realize something. And it said something like, it said, if we continue to try to shrink God down to our own understanding, 
we will inevitably boil God down to something that isn't even godly. Right? For, for what, I'm, what I'm saying is, for me, my struggle was, God, you have to fit perfectly inside of my brain and my understanding and my comprehension. And, and the struggle is, if you're, if you're worshiping a God that you can understand perfectly, it doesn't seem like he's that godly. If your brain can comprehend, he's far greater than our understanding sometimes. And this was the struggle for me in this season. And my, my question to you is, are you in a season like that? Is your, is your faith fading today? Are you in a place where maybe it's just that fire? Remember that excitement, that energy that you had when you first started following Christ? Is that still there? Or has it slowly faded to just this, you're existing? And I believe this is one of the biggest struggles that we face. You know, statistically, uh, it, it said that uh, atheism, so that the belief that there is no God at all, has actually doubled Every generation, it's doubling the, the amount of people that believe in no existence of a God. That they've, for, for many, it's even that they, they've actually lost their faith, if you will. It's that they're, they're, what they grew up with and what they understood at one point, it, it's, it's gone away. It's been extinguished to some degree where they find themselves in a place where it's like, I just believe in nothing past what I can experience right now. And for some of us, my question to you is, are you in that type of season today? See, the struggle is that your faith is fading because of a season that's changed. For some of us, that, that once excitement and energy that we had in our faith, it, it's just because seasons change and it's not how it used to be. And for me, my conviction as a pastor is that, that I, ha- I, have to, I have to teach for all seasons Like we can't just talk about the good seasons of life. So you can just be like, yay, Jesus, because you will experience a season that's more difficult. And if your faith isn't strong enough, it'll ruin you. It'll mess you up. I want to talk about a faith for each of us that, that we have to wrestle with, that we have to deal with, because this is about spiritual maturity. For some of you, it's, it's understanding that, that you have to prepare for the seasons ahead. Because if you don't, you're, you're slowly just going to get to a place where it seems like you're losing your faith, where you're just on the decline, where you find yourself in a place that you, you wish you were never because you, you didn't build forward. You just existed in this moment. So if we look at this section of scripture that I read, and I want to continue reading because what it said in verse 24 was, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen him. But, but he responds, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my finger into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. And then it says this. It says, eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. He says, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. In response, my Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen. And he says this, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Now, a couple of things that are happening in this moment is we see it twice now happen over the course of roughly two weeks is the disciples are in hiding. They're behind a locked door, it says. In the original text, it would be more like a bar- like blocked door. They're, they're barricaded in because here's what happened. They saw Jesus be persecuted, beaten, and put to death for what he believed, what he said, and now all of his followers are in hiding because the same thing will happen to them. They're in hiding in this moment when they meet Jesus, when Jesus enters a room that's locked. My first point is this, future forward faith turns into fading faith because of loss. Because of loss. See, if you were to go uh, nine chapters earlier, I want to take you there. John chapter, uh, it's John chapter 11, and it's found in verse 14. Verse 14, 
And we're going to see Jesus and we're going to see Thomas in this moment. And it says, verse 14, it says, so he told them plainly, Jesus speaking, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. And then it says in verse 16, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, to all the guys, he says, let's go to and die with Jesus. Now what's happening is uh, Lazarus lives in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where all the religious leaders are. Uh, They know that the religious leaders hate Jesus and his disciples for what they're saying and doing. So if you go to Jerusalem, you're going to the place where persecution will start. Why would you want to go to that location? And, And so Jesus says, let's go. And you can just imagine all the disciples are grumbling. And then all of a sudden though, Thomas He says this, he says, let's go too. Let's go and die with Jesus. Like, I I don't know about you, but when I read this, Thomas is like that guy. You all know that guy, the the hyped guy, right? Like the hyped person is the one that just gets excited over everything. You know that person. You have that person in your life. You might be that person. Like, like just imagine, here's my illustration. You could find a pen in a gutter of a street with like toilet paper wrapped around it. And yeah, some of you are like, that's a weird illustration. And you could give it to that person and you'd be like, hey, I know your favorite color is blue. So here's this pen, it's blue. And they would be like, yeah, thanks dude. Like it's the most disgusting. They get excited about anything. You go to a wedding, a dance, right? Everyone's dancing. You got like the people dancing, right? Normal people, average people just doing this, right? Okay, these are the white people, just they don't know they have hips, so they just go like this. You got the Hispanics, you're doing a little more, getting them hips moving. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's the normal person. The hyped person walks out on the stage. My my little son is the hyped kid. Like he walks out and goes crazy on the dance floor. But the hyped person walks out on the dance floor, everyone else is like, isn't this nice? And the hype person's like, hey, uh, uh. They go robot style, they like Kids, you'll know what I'm doing. Eh. Like, they'll do this thing on TikTok and like, like, what are you doing? Like, they, they get way too excited about something. Thomas is this in this moment. Everyone else is like, dude, Jerusalem, I don't know that we should be going there. Thomas is like, let's go. We're going to die with Jesus today. Like, what are you doing? He's hyped. The average person is, is not hyped. We know the average person, right? It just doesn't seem like they're that excited about anything. We got the like really not hype person. You could give them $1,000 and they're like, oh, thanks, dude. And it's like, what? The hype person would be like running around, ripping their shirt off, like, yeah. Like, it's different. You could go to a, a, a stadium and everyone's wearing the jersey that they love, the team they support, at least the color. The hype person's literally shirtless, whole body painted, going crazy. Like, like Thomas is this in this moment. But in chapter 20, Thomas is the one that says, I, I'm not going to believe it unless I see it. My question to you is, what happened? What happened for Thomas? Like nine chapters later and his demeanor, his his response is so different because the hype person would trust their friends. So when their friends say, we just saw Jesus, he he should have been like, no way. That's amazing. He, he, He actually did what he said he would do. But instead, Thomas is like, I'm not accepting this. I won't believe it unless I see it and I can touch it and I can, I, I, I can know it for sure for myself. See, something happened to Thomas between chapter 11 and chapter 20 because he experienced loss. Like many of us, he, he experienced a form of loss where he gave his life, he gave his career, he gave up everything to follow Jesus. And then all of a sudden... He watches as the man he gave his life to and the man he saw do so many amazing things, be persecuted, be nailed upon a tree, and be murdered. He experienced loss. Everything that he thought would happen didn't happen the way he expected, and and now he's carrying this burden. And for some of us, the same struggle occurs where you're going to face seasons that are different than the one you first experienced. So like Thomas, he could could have seen thousands of people fed by just a few uh, pieces of bread and fish and the amazement that could occur. But then seasons later, he sees something different. 
and he sees persecution. And for you and I, we go through similar seasons where you might be in a season that, that, man, you're just so on fire and excited for what God is doing, but then you go through another season and all of a sudden, it feels like you're losing your faith, like it's slowly fading away from you. And here's what I need you to hear because I, I don't want you to just live on the mountaintop, but I need you to be able to survive through the valleys. We have to actually build a spiritual maturity that can withstand seasons. I don't want to find ourselves in this place where we read in Scripture, it says the lukewarm or, or, or just the, the existing like, we're not looking in our marriages to coexist, and we're not looking in our spiritual journey to just exist. There's something more for us that we, we have to fight for and work for. Now, Thomas, he's, he's known, if you grew up in church at all, or if you've been in church long enough, we call Thomas Doubting Thomas. That's like what his name is, which is such a sad statement that that's what he's known for. This one moment. Why isn't he known for like crazy hyped Thomas? That is way too extreme. That's like, let's go die today. Like, why is he known as the doubting Thomas? This is, this is Thomas in this moment, known as doubting Thomas because he doesn't accept or believe what other witnesses have seen. And I, I want to say this, doubting itself is not wrong. Doubting is a part of our, our spiritual journey. Like For many of us, you have to doubt before you believe. The struggle is for many of us, we live in our doubts and we never actually deal with it. We never actually handle it or, or research it. We just live in the doubts and never work it out. So we're just living on this balance beam, never actually living in one realm or the other. See, doubting isn't wrong, but it, it, it's what you do with that. But what Jesus says in verse 29, I think, is vital and important for us. Sometimes faith has to take a step. Sometimes you do the research, you, you know the facts, but at some point you have to actually put your faith to work. And what he says in verse 29, he says, blessed are those who do not see. Like, blessed are those who actually just put their faith in sometimes. It's not some blind faith, but at some point you have to step out in faith. And the struggle is what happens when you experience loss? For some of you, maybe you just need to take a hard look at your own life right now. And maybe you've just experienced some loss in your life. And it's found you in this place where you're just carrying this burden. And your faith doesn't feel like it's that, that exciting or, 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 or that energizing, but it just feels like it's slowly fading because of loss in your life. It could be loss of a career, loss of a marriage, loss of a loved one that you can't comprehend. Why would God allow this? And through the loss, you found yourself in a place where you're not willing to accept or not willing to see God at work in your life anymore. It's just this place that you're existing. See, one thing you need to hear is even when, it's, uh, when you experience loss, it's never too late for God. A famous theologian, like writer named Spurgeon, he, he writes this and he says, it's a blessed thing to trust God when you cannot trace him. What he's saying, it's a blessed thing. This is what verse 29 is saying. It's a blessed thing to actually continue to trust God, to remain faithful in what he's calling you to even when you can't always see it. Like it's a blessed thing as a church to continue to do the ministry, even when sometimes it looks different. It's a blessed thing to continue to fight for your marriage and, and continue to fight for unification and reconciliation. It's a blessed thing, even when you don't always see the outcomes right away. Verse 29 is, is vital for us to hear, and it's, you're going to experience loss. You're going to experience these moments where your faith is being tested or fading. But, but it's what you do in these moments. It's how you're spiritually built. It's, it's how you've, you've researched and grown in God's word. It's, if you don't build anything upon this foundation, you're going to hit a season that's going to bring questions. And if you can't go to God's word to find your answers, you're going to be on shaky foundation. But now I want to talk about the how-to, right? So I want to talk about this point. When God heals fading faith, he does something tangible, visual, 
and personal. He does something tangible, visual, and personal. I want you to see this, the evidence that is required in this moment. See, the disciples, Jesus enters a room and and he shows his wounds, but right away they respond in amazement. But Timothy, he demands some evidence. He says, I won't believe, I'm not going to accept it unless I can touch the wounds, unless I can see those scars, unless I can put my hand into his side. Now, the original text That gets a little intimate, a little graphic. Like he wants to place his hand into an open wound in the side of Christ that was put there by a spear. Like this is what he's saying in this moment. So, So what we see for Timothy is he needed something tangible, visual, and personal. And what we see is tangible. Jesus says, put your hands here. Put your hands here, Timothy. Thomas, not Timothy. That's another guy in the Bible. He says, he says put, your, put your hands here, but then he says, hey, visually, look and see what you just saw on Friday. You're going to see the scars from. But then he says, personal, he goes, hey, now put your hand in my side, in this wound. And it's through something tangible, visual, and personal that Thomas says, oh my God, it is Christ resurrected. So I want you to hear this because Thomas needed more and and Christ met him where he was at. For some of us, we need to see how we play this part in our own lives. And it goes two-faced because it's it's you. how, How do you encounter God tangibly, visually, personally? But then you need to start seeing something because we're called, and he says it in the scripture, he says, I- I'm breathing the Holy Spirit upon you. And now when you go and you show forgiveness, forgiveness will come. So he's saying now you're empowered to go and do. And what we're called to is, is to actually be tangible, visual, and personal for others so that they would encounter Christ as well. So I want you to hear this because this is us. See, in 2020, this has been one of the most generous years we have been as a church. See, because of your faithfulness in your 10%, we've continued to be faithful in different ways. So I want to I want to share this with you. <clears throat> this year, we've we've given out of our church into ministry partners, into outreach, into different ways, over six thousand dollars where we said, Hey, we want to go and bless. So we went and blessed San Bernardino Pregnancy Resource Center, a ministry partner that we've partnered with for years now, right here in the heart of San Bernardino that minister to to young families, expecting mothers, uh, man, people with so many different questions where you can go down down there and and you can get a sonogram for free. They're going to give you education. They're going to give you supplies. They're going to give you everything you need. And there's families, there's young women walking into this place and they're discovering that, hey, God has already equipped you and there are others around you that are going to support you. you. You've been faithful in being tangible, visual, and personal in a way that maybe you don't even think about or recognize always. See, we've continued to be faithful with the body ministry uh, that goes down into Mexico, that disciples families, that, that feeds families, that, that gives education to kids so that they would have a better future than ever before. They're giving supplies away. I went down there twice this year, and I got to see the work that's happening. And I'm telling you, it's amazing when you see someone that you can hear stories about where we were ministering to them, but now that family is discipling and ministering to others. That's what we're called to do, where thousands are being fed, where where everything is being provided with the name of Jesus, because they're meeting something tangible, something visual, and something personal for them. But, but we go on. 2020 has been a crazy year. Right here in the heart of San Bernardino, we experienced riots. And, and as a church, we said, no, we, we are not going to let just chaos reign. We're going to let compassion reign. So as a church, we gave out over $3,000 to different businesses that were already dealing with the pandemic going, I don't know what my future looks like. I'm going to have to lay off staff. I can't even figure out how I'm going to survive. And all of a sudden, a church shows up and says, hey, Here's $1,000. This is a sign of what we know God is going to provide for you and your business. Where, where an entire block was ministered to. 
that lived right in the heart of riots, where little kids are hearing right outside the chaos. Their home doesn't even feel safe anymore. But then a group of people show up, bringing supplies and gifts and toys for kids and different things for families to say, hey, we, we know that you are experiencing something and, and, and man, we were praying for you, but now we're here for you, meeting you tangibly, visually, and personally. Like, I, I want you to hear that because for some of you, what you need to hear, because your faith has been faded over the last months or years, that you're missing the work of God. And right now, maybe you're hearing something going, wow, God is still on the throne and he is still working. For some of you, you need to hear that because you're a part of the church and the church is called to go and do something tangible, visual, and personal. So over a month ago, I, I asked you guys to uh, fill out this form online and it, it just said, I'm having future forward faith that. And, and, and it left it blank for you to fill out. What were you believing God for? What, what were you asking God to man, sort out and solve in your life? What, what were you just having faith that God would do around you or in you? And we received tons, and, and many of them spoke about, man, for our marriage, uh, spoke about for our families, for our adult kids, that they would encounter Christ and, and, and that their life would be transformed because we know the blessing in Christ. And, and for others, it was for my health and that God would give some answers. For others, it was for the surgery that's coming up and all these different, uh, uh, man, moments where we as a church are able to pray with you for these moments that God would reveal himself to you, that we would be able to see God at work. And, and I can tell you, man, there's moments where you hear stories already that you can start to see God show up where you can hear of surgeries that are going to happen or have happened and then all of a sudden they tell you that you don't need to come back for a checkup for like not just month but like years like what I've never heard of that before I know people that have cancer and have faced different issues or had had to go to the surgery and they were told you're going to come back in a few months at most because we got to check and see what's going on so when you're told that you're man the the astonishment of God at work in these moments and this is something where we encounter Christ in our own personal lives. I, I have stories, maybe you have stories where I remember seasons where financially it was more difficult, but it seemed like every time I was faithful with what God gave me, he continued to be faithful where, where bills were paid somehow that I can't do the math properly to add that up because God shows up in these moments. But, but I want you to hear this too, because as a church, you are a part of this throughout all those moments, but also right now. I want to talk to someone, uh, and you're going to know who you are. Reuben, uh, y- you said, hey, I'm having future forward faith, that God is going to give me a driver's license, that God is going to provide a car for me, that God is going to give me a career that I can have so that I can provide for my family. And what I'm saying is as a church, hey, here's a moment where we get to step in and say, hey, we're with you in that. But not only that, we're going to step in and say, you reach out to the church, and we're going to help you get that driver's license. Because we know that's where it starts. But then we're going to continue to have faith that God's going to show up. And he's going to provide all those little resources that you need so that you can be who God has called you to be. I, I want to talk to you about uh, the San Bernardino Pregnancy Resource Center. I, I shared about them. Uh, right now, they're ministering in 2020. It's been difficult. It's hard. But they're still doing the work to help families realize, man, you are already qualified and capable to be an amazing parent to that child. And you don't even realize it. But there's other people around you to help resource you and provide for you. And right now, what we're saying is San Bernardino Pregnancy Resource Center. We have 500 diapers that are coming your way. Something tangible, something visual something personal that comes to you. The leaders in a ministry that go, man, everything is chaotic. Ministry is hard right now. But maybe for those leaders, those people serving down there, they're going to see something tangible for themselves. But not only that, then they get to play a part in a family experiencing something tangible, visual, and personal. Speaking to the body ministry in Mexico, every Christmas, they have a crazy season where they minister. Like we're talking, they send Santa to Mexico. And I'm talking Santa, the real one. Like he doesn't have a pillow in here or a fake beard. He's legit. I know who he is. I'm sure you're watching right now. You're Santa. And I know every year you go down there and man, the kids, how they respond to this, the excitement they have. Something, something so simple as, as someone that's willing to give up a weekend to go and minister little kids and, and just the awe that they have. 
But then Santa comes with a crew, and a crew comes with gifts and supplies. But every year, they also bring jackets and socks and all these things because as the weather gets colder, they know the, these families, many of them are living in just sheds that are, are, are barely supplied, and, and it's going to get tough. And, and they go down there every year with supplies. But what I'm saying is uh, the body ministry, we as a church... We love you. We know the work you're doing to be tangible, visual, and personal. And we're sending 200 pairs of socks to say, go and do what God has called you to do and bless people so that they would encounter Christ. I say all this because I need you to hear this. For, for Thomas, it was a moment where he's doubting and Christ met him where he was at. And he met his tangible, visual, and personal needs. And I believe God is calling you and me to do the same thing for others, that they would encounter Christ, not because of my greatness. That stinks. I fell all the time, but God would still use me and he'll still use you to meet people tangibly, visually, and personally, that lives would be changed, that Thomas is no longer known as Doubting Thomas. He doesn't deserve that name because that was a season in his faith but that season is over. And he walked out of that room ignited again. I, I want to talk to you about this because as we wrap up this series, my, my hope is that somewhere you'll find the faith to continue to build, to continue to grow, to continue to mature, and for many of you to actually act your faith out. I, I share this because John finishes 20 up, and really he starts to put a, a, a picture of what he, his goal has been throughout this gospel. And he shares it this, it's to promote the faith. It, it, it's to empower and activate the believers. It, it's to help mature those that are, are fading away, to build them stronger for the seasons ahead. And, and I share this because that has been the goal of this series this whole time that we wouldn't let our faith be known as this. Are you a person of faith? Oh, yeah, sure, I go to church. That's not what faith is. Faith has so many more characteristics. If you study what faith is, it, you start to see it in what you understand and believe, but how you live that out as well. So for many of you, my hope and my prayer is that throughout this conversation, maybe, just maybe, you grew a little in your faith. Maybe you've matured in your faith. Maybe you've started to act your faith out a little more. And that is my hope and my prayer for my life and for yours, for us as a church, that we would see that we can be tangible, visual, and personal for others, that they would encounter Christ as well. Because it's in those moments when your faith grows as well. I can tell you all day long, it's in moments where we see people give their life to Christ. It's in moments where we see people baptized in his name. It's in moments where we see people go, why would you do this for me? And they hear the name of Jesus and their life starts to transition and change because of the amazing work of Christ that my faith grows. So I share this with you because for many of you, it's, it's time for us to own our faith a little more. For many of us, it's to take that next step in our faith. But I also want to talk to you today where maybe you need to take that first step of faith. See, in, cha uh, in John 3.16, same book, he says, uh, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, that whoever has faith in Jesus Christ will not perish but have everlasting life. So, so what I'm, I want you to hear is that first step of faith is recognizing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And maybe today that's the first step you need to take. So I'm talking to you, if that's you, then, then I want to ask you, would you... Would you respond with me? If that's you today where you're like, man, I need to take the first step of faith and recognize actually that Jesus Christ has met my tangible, visual, and personal needs in my life already, the greatest need ever, the amazing grace that's provided, salvation, that we are reconciled and brought into the family of God, that that's that first step. If that's you today, I'm gonna ask you, would you repeat a prayer after me? But I'm gonna ask our entire church, to continue and repeat that same prayer. We all say this prayer together. So would you join me in this right now? Heavenly Father, God, I recognize Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. God, that I surrender 
my past, my identity, and I recognize a new identity in Christ. It is because of your amazing grace that I receive salvation today. Because of that amazing grace, I walk in a new identity. God, I repent of my past, but I walk in a new identity with you. It's all because of your amazing grace and love. And it's all because of the name of Jesus we say, amen. If you said that prayer today, I want to encourage you right now that 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 is something that is the beginning of your faith journey. So I'm asking you, if you said that prayer for the very first time today, I'm asking you, would you consider and text or call or email? I don't care how you contact us, but let us know that you have accepted Christ because that is the beginning of your spiritual journey. Let us know that that this is the beginning. And we as pastors, we're going to contact you. And we're going to help you and let you know what we believe your next step is so that you would continue to grow in your faith so that no matter what season comes, you are prepared and strengthened so that you are connected to the body of Christ, the church, and that we would be here for you. If you said that today, I want to celebrate with you. This is a moment where my faith grows because I see people recognize the amazing grace of Christ. I see God at work in lives. For all of us, would you join me in prayer right now as we wrap up this series? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you today for each of us that come together. God, I pray that you would use this conversation on faith greater than we could ever expect. God, that you would use technology, that you would use just our voices as we talk to others, that you would use us as how we live that out and act that out, that you would use us Uh, that you would use us to see our faith grow, but to see other recognize and encounter you. God, I pray that you would just continue to just pour faith upon this church, that we would step out and not always lean on our own understanding, but lean on you. God, I pray that you would empower each of us individually. God, that when we face seasons where our faith feels like it's being tested or fading, God, that we would recognize this is a moment where we can also be strengthened. God, that you would would build us strong for whatever season comes our way, that we would be prepared as followers of Christ to deal with that season, to minister to those in need. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we say, amen.